Good evening to everyone. This evening, I start by saying to you a very special thank you. I say thanks to you because three and a half years ago, you could have made a different decision. You could have said to yourselves that I am not accustomed to three parties coming together in the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis to form any government and I am not going to experiment with my future. However, you asked for team unity. You gave team unity an opportunity. And recently you said when a poll was taken in this country that team unity is taking this country in the right direction. In other words, you have said that you are more than satisfied with the choice that you have made. You not only said it when you said that the country is going in the right direction. You said it when you said the Honorable Dr. Timothy Harris is the best person to continue to lead this country. You said it when you said if an election is called again in this country, you're going to vote for Team Unity again. But it's not only you, because the pollster also said that if the election is called again, that there is going to be a shift in favor of Team Unity, meaning even those who did not vote for Team Unity have seen the good that Team Unity has done and will vote for Team Unity. That is why I say thank you. I have always believed that all politics is local. And tonight, I can speak to many achievements as Minister of Education, Youth, Sport and Culture. But I'm in constituency number seven. And I don't have to look any further than right here to show you how we are doing things in the Ministry of Education, Youth, Sport and Culture. You're here sitting down at this primary school, Edgar T. Morris Primary School. What many of you will not know, that if it was to rain and you were here a year ago, you would have been here moving your chairs elsewhere. And if you move your chairs elsewhere from out of this classroom and go to a next classroom, it would, have, it would not have been any different because rain would have been wet in you still. And no matter which classroom you went into right here, all of the classrooms over here were leaking. Every single classroom was leaking. You heard me correctly. Not one was spared. Not a single classroom. One day I came over here and the principal began to point out to me the issues. And she took us from classroom to classroom and said, Minister, we need a new roof over here. When you get in your new roof right now, your children would not have been comfortable neither in their homes or right here at this school. But thank God to Team Unity, you're comfortable in your homes and the children are comfortable in their classrooms right here. That is what we have done for you. And that is why you must say thanks to Team Unity for delivering on the promises that we have made. We have fixed the roof. You look at the flooring. We have put a special material in the floor right here to make it more comfortable for the students. But it's not just the school here in Tabernacle that we had problems with. You go to the preschool, we had problems there, and we also had to rectify those problems. We had to remove the windows, replace them because the teachers were complaining that any time rain came, the children were getting wet. Not under a government of team unity. Our children must be taken care of. At the industrial site Tuesday, 
we have a reopening ceremony for that daycare center. Those of you who work on the industrial site and your children are taken care of there, you know that for a whole year we had to close down that school because the roof there was collapsing. Two and three year olds, babies there, a roof there collapsing. And the farm administration didn't see it fit to fix the roof at the industrial site daycare center. But this is a different government. This is a caring government. This is a government which is looking after all of the people. I said to your politics is local. Look outside and tell me what you see down there on the play field. Brand new floodlights on the play field out there on the team unity. On the team unity. And the work out there isn't finished. Before the end of this year, you should see construction taking place to put in bleachers and other facilities right here at the Tabernacle Play Field. For those of you from Mansion, you had a similar situation in Mansion. The pavilion roof over there collapsing when wind blow, galvanized flapping, brap, 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 brap. You go over there right now. Brand new roof being placed on the mansion playing field. Pavilion. Team unity delivering for the young people in this country. And while we're spending money on you, we're spending money on you. Patches told you the public debt gone down. We're spending money on you. Not the farm administration that took up 16 million US dollars from out of SIDF and put it over in a private development at Christoph Harbor to give people over there a roof while right here in Tabernacle, the school roof leaking. 16 million dollars in Christoph Harbor. And when you got to mansion, the roof over there need replacing. 16 million dollars in Crystal Faber, a private development and the lights on the play field out there. That wasn't development which was about you. That was development about foreign investors who you expect to come into the country and bring their own money. We have said no to that. And next 20 something million dollars went down in Ketishan Hill. While your children up in the Tabernacle Decay Center suffering. We have said no to that. And that is why we have ensured you're getting your roof fix right here in Tabernacle. And while we are doing all of that, we haven't bankrupt the country, but we have been able to reduce the public debt. That is what we have been able to do. And that is why you have said that the country is moving in the right direction. Since we went into government, not a single tax has increased on you, the people of this country. You get double salary, not tax gone up, not just one year, but two years. And according to the Prime Minister, you're very well getting a double salary again this year. And no tax increase. He said, I don't know, and he said that. He said, maybe. But, but in all honesty, he had said at a public forum sometime before, if no hurricane come this year, more than likely you can pay a double salary. I don't know how many of you remember that, but he did say it. He did say it. No, no, hurricane won't come capsec. Stop calling hurricane no capsec. <laughs> but what we are doing? We are doing things in the interest of the people of this country. In particular, the young people of this country. When Valencia introduced me, she spoke about Bastia High School. And I can speak about Bastia High School. Because the contract is in Ireland right now. 
And so you know what going on relative to Bastia High School. As a matter of fact, he sent me some pictures. I have them here on my iPad. I could show them to you. So we have said we're delivering on Bastia High School. And we will deliver on Bastia High School. Because we care about young people. When we look at the crime situation and the fact that young people involved in the crime, it means we have to do many, many more things on behalf of the young people in this country. That is why we continue to deliver. But while we continue to deliver and speak about crime, some persons don't want the crime to go away. They don't want it to go away. They want to go on radio and say crime high. Somebody got killed yesterday. Somebody got killed two days ago. Somebody got killed this week. That is what they want to be able to do to speak about crime and murders in this country. But this government will do all that it has to do to bring down the rate of crime in this country. On one hand, they tell you too many illegal guns in the country. And when persons have illegal guns and you charge them, that's how you're victimizing them. You can't have it both ways. If you have a gun, you license to it. That is the law. That is the law. I remember, you know, I remember a few years ago, I had to go before the court in this country. Why I went before the court? Pam had a public meeting. And when the public meeting was finished, myself, Lindsey Grant, Charles Warner, Eugene Hamilton, Chesley Hamilton, we got someone so we got to go to court because we had a public meeting and we ain't got a permission to have the public meeting. The fact is, every single meeting we had, we applied for permission. One meeting, the lady in the office heard and didn't send in the letter seeking permission. And so we went at the meeting thinking all things are in order. And we end up before the court because they say we had a public meeting without getting the necessary permit from the police. They said we break the law. They said we break the law. The record was there to show consistently meeting after meeting we applied. But they said we break the law. And so we went to court and we had our day in court. Well, a man got a gun. Supposed to license the gun. Ain't license the gun. For 10 months. Not one month. Not two, three, four, five, six. Ten long months. Going on the walk with it. Putting it down all over the place on the walk. Somebody take up the gun, went with the gun. He decided he ain't telling the police anything about it. He ain't cooperating with the police. He ain't reporting it to the police. Illegal guns on the street. People using guns to commit crime. And he gets summons for having the gun. And they're telling you that the government wrong. The police wrong to bring charges against the gentleman. That sounds to you like persons who are interested in bringing an end to crime and violence in this country. You can't have it both ways. And an example must be set to set to all citizens, regardless of who you are. You must live within the confines of the law. I don't have anything against the gentleman, but the law is the law. Every month, especially, not every month, but in January in particular, you hear the notice on the radio over and over again that you have until the end of January to come in and renew your firearm license. I have a license for your arm. And every once January approach, I know I have to go and pay me money to renew the license. Michael Powell saying it to Dan, you know you too. Because that's the law. And you must abide by the law, regardless of which political party you support. If it was me, they would have had a right. They would have had the right to come and charge me too. Because I am not above the law. And a man in this country should be above it. 
the RSS here. They keeping all kind of noise about RSS. Same set of hypocrites. Bunch of hypocrites. One day they're on the radio. You got one rah, 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 rah. She tell you, I tell you, this shop get robbing constituency. The Santo Domingo people can't live comfortable because every minute is some crime. You're bringing the RSS to help with the crime. That's what the RSS is saying on a call here. What really they want? But you know why I tell you they're also they're hypocrites? I have an article here in front of me. Delegation returns home Friday from Friday RSS meeting in St. Vincent. And who the delegation is? St. Kitts and Nevis Prime Minister Denzel Douglas returned home on Saturday after attending the Regional Security Council of Ministers meeting in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. He was accompanied by Attorney General the Honorable Patrice Nisbet, Commander of the Defence Force Colonel Wallace, and Commissioner of the Royal St. Christopher and Nevis Police Force, C.G. Walwin. That's only one article, you know? The date, well, I say he was the Prime Minister then, so you must say before 2015. But the date and the article is March 26, 2012. The only one article. So the man attended meetings of the RSS. But he got something with the RSS functioning and being in St. Kitts. Next article. St. Kitts Neve is one of the few countries paying RSS dues on time. Because we have to pay to be a member of the RSS. And we are the only country paying our fees on time. Well, if I pay my fees on time, why the hell I can't use them? Huh? We are paying them for no reason. If I have a problem in my country and that is what I do for, what are I supposed to do? Now call them I say I pay you. I want to come do some work for me. Welcome. What wrong with that? Huh? No, no wrong with that. I have a third article here. Me 15 minutes probably finish. Regional Security System Council of Ministers meeting. 2010. And where the meeting was held? Not St. Vincent. Not Grenada. Not Antigua. Not Dominica either. Right here. According to the lady back there. Right here. Meeting held in the Federation. And who presiding over the meeting? Douglas. The hypocrite Douglas presided over the meeting. The article goes on to say to you, that with the high command of the police force, to discuss crime fighting strategies, including dealing with gang violence. So you could take advice for them. You could attend meeting in St. Vincent. You ain't by at the meeting. You could have meeting in St. Kitts with them. As a matter of fact, the article also says that the current commissioner of police, Ian Queeley, was working with the RSS at the time. Well, Douglas had to approve that too. Because for any person working for government to work for a regional organization, you have to be seconded and it has to be approved by the government. And the prime minister in particular has to sign off on it. So Douglas had to approve it. So you can send Ian Queeley, who was an assistant commissioner of police back then, to Barbados to work with the RSS. Well, it's the same Ian Queeley who told this government that he wants help from the RSS. He worked with the RSS. Denzel Douglas authorized it. And as commissioner of police, he said he wants help from the RSS. And Douglas now saying, RSS should not be here. A bunch of hypocrites. And that is why they must stay where they are. And that is out of government. Let them stay there. Disloyal to the country. And patriotic. I sure if the RSS was going to Dominica to protect his investments in Dominica, he would have said, thank God for that. 
and I understand they went after the hurricane and you ain't hear nothing from him with saying the IRS should not go to Dominica but he has investments in Dominica so that is okay with him but not for them to come to St. Kitts because he ain't in government he ain't the Prime Minister and so they must not come to help us it's like you have parents living here in this community. You have a head teacher and the children about to turn five and the head teacher invite all of the parents to have a meeting and say, this is the best school. Send your children here when they turn five. And when they come, the teacher sends them to speak to all the teachers to find out how good things are at this school. Send them to this school. But tomorrow you change your head teacher and you send the head teacher to a different school and somebody else becomes the head teacher and so the head teacher now goes around in this same community and says to the parents nobody send them to the school the school no good that's denzel douglas he no longer in charge so all of a sudden it's the rss no longer good to come to saint kitts and nevis that is the type of hypocrite that the man is we don't need a hypocrite in charge of this country we have already get, gotten rid of him and let him stay exactly where he is let him stay where he is you know one of them calling radio the other and i don't know and they say well the prime minister only could get 36 support in terms of popularity for leadership i said so where your point is Douglas was in government for 20 years. And he can get more than the Prime Minister. 20 years and all you said that he's so good. So what really is your point? He was there 5, 10, 15, 20 years. Timothy Harris only been there three and a half years. And Timothy Harris already more popular than him. And that is what he can deal with. That is what he can deal with. And if he think he popularity run out, tell him he gonna get worse. Because when you walk around the country, up to today before I come here, Pam people I tell you, Labour people I tell you, no people party I tell you, I vote in unity because I get my house rough. We ain't start with the $500 a month program yet, but when that start, he gonna get even worse for him. It, and the thing is, you know, none of them in there could help him. Not one of them could help him. The one that like get through the parliament only two percent support he get. And the one that is say rah 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 only three percent support she gets. So between the two alternatives, only five percent. Then account. As a matter of fact, when you look at the graph, the thing hardly move. He hardly above the line. You could hardly see anything for them. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, again I say thank you. Team Unity has looked after you and Team Unity will continue to look after you. <laughs>